What's up, guys? I'm your host, Donovan Jones. Welcome to the Call to Act podcast. Today, I have a very special guest, my good friend, Chris Laparco. He is the author of a, a story told book series. And so we're going to get into a little bit of the backstory behind why he got into it, what he's trying to do through the novels that he is putting out. But before I get into any of that, I'm going to read a review. This is straight from Apple. If you want your review read on the podcast, it's very simple. Just go on Apple Podcasts, scroll all the way down to the bottom, leave me five stars, leave a review, and I will read your review on the podcast. And so today, um, the review that I'm reading is from Hot Tail, and it, Hot Tail 4, and um, the title says Encouraging, and they left five stars. Thank you so very much for the five-star rating, and they said, great podcast, very uplifting and beneficial for everyone listening. Praise the Lord. Thank you so very much for taking the time to not only listen but to leave me a rating and review. And if you, like I said, want to have your review read on the podcast, it's very simple. Go to Apple and do that. If you're watching this on YouTube, do me a favor and go ahead and stop that subscribe button, like and comment on the episode because it really does help though. With all that being said, hopefully you guys enjoy the show. Welcome to the Contact Podcast. I got my buddy Chris Laparco on the podcast today. I'm excited about this conversation because me and Chris, I don't remember how like uh, we initially first met each other, but I do remember that I either heard, I think I heard you on a podcast and then I reached, I don't remember if I reached out to you or w whatever the case was, but I thought you hosted the podcast. I don't yeah. know if you remember this or not. Yes, yes, yeah. So, yeah, so I thought you hosted the podcast. So when when we were first talking back and forth, I was talking to you like I thought you were a fellow podcaster. And so and then you were like, I don't have a podcast. <laughs> yeah, you reached out to me on Instagram. It was yeah. the so podcast that I was on. It was a guy I had actually <laughs> met when I was in Minnesota at the God Comics and Gaming Convention. It was the first year for that convention this year will be the second year and I'll be going yeah. to Minnesota for that. So yeah, I met him there and he interviewed me and you thought I was the host. And I was like, no, I was <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, it was funny because, you know, um, on a podcast, if somebody, if, it, if this isn't something that people watch on YouTube, they're just listening to it. So like I, in my mind, as I was talking to you, I was, I was expect, I was looking at your picture, but then expecting the voice, like a different voice, you know what I'm saying? Like I was, I kind of had it mixed up. So then I was like, wait, what's going on here? But then, uh, so that was pretty funny, but yeah, it was a, it was a great interview. We've kind of, I don't remember how long ago that was, but, um, I love the stuff that you're doing with the, with the novels and stuff like that. I actually told my wife, I'm like, we got to get our daughter some of your stuff. So, um, I'll just kind of give you, give you a minute here, a couple minutes to kind of introduce yourself and kind of what you're doing with your work. And yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, yeah, just so blessed to be here. Um, I'm Chris Loparco, um, and yeah, I, I author a series called A Story Told, and it is a Christian fantasy series um, that really my influences stem everywhere from Japanese anime, American comic books, uh, you know, you name it. There's a little bit of Shakespeare in there. There's a little bit of horror mixed in, a lot of sci-fi as well. Um, but obviously all centered around the Bible, uh, scripturally sound and the characters in it get their power, uh, by having faith in Christ and through the power of the Holy spirit. And that's where the heroes are, uh, just empowered to face the, the villains that they, they go up against. I published the first book about 12 years ago. Can't believe it's been that long. Um, and I have three novels now in the series, one free online series called Man or Machine that takes place between the second and third book. And I just finished writing the next installment of Man or Machine called Man or Machine Izod, I-S-O-D, which is the intense special ops division of the uh, Federal Department of Supernatural Research. And uh, it's this team of um, people that work for the government, but actually do believe in Jesus Christ and they're fighting against these- uh, That these is fiction. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, uh, I've been doing it for about 12 years now. So super excited about uh, just, you know, putting out more books and, and obviously sharing God's word through some fun fantasy and, and things like that. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, yeah, I love it. I love it. And we we were talking before we started recording about how you've had people tell you that through like the work that you're doing through the novels that that you have put out that it's kind of made them seek out a relationship with Christ, right? Yeah, I have. So obviously I do have a Christian audience, but I have a lot of people that have read my books that are not Christian. And actually a cool thing is uh, I travel a lot um, mm -hmm. and I work with a lot of people internationally um, through my job. And so I have a small audience in China and I've actually had people in India who have read my books and now they have Bibles. Now they're learning about Jesus. They're asking me questions. I actually do bring Bibles over to China. Um, I love that. I will study in my hotel room. Um, I'm, I'm so blessed. God does things like really cool things. Like, so I've been staying at the same hotel for gosh, uh, maybe almost 20 years. And, uh, so they know me very well. So they always upgrade me to this like giant suite. So there you go. like this living room area where everybody could sit down and hang out and, and I could have a Bible study in there. And yeah, I've been, um, so blessed that God's been putting people in my life that are hungry to learn about him, hungry to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And, um, Actually, one of the guys that I've been uh, praying with and gave a Bible to, he's going to be traveling to the States next year, and he actually wants to get baptized. Oh, man, that's awesome. So that's, uh, yeah, it's what a blessing. And um, and so that's actually uh, one thing I'm doing now is I'm actually getting the uh, just finished having the first book translated into Chinese. I'm working out all the kinks and how to publish it over there and, and things like that. But I'm actually going to publish a Chinese edition of A Story Told. Uh, hopefully within the next year or two, um, Lord willing, and, and actually use that as, a, as another platform when I'm over there to uh, further the gospel. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I'm beating myself up, too. I've been doing it for a while because I don't remember when the Strawberry Festival was, but you weren't too far away from me. I was not. and You were not too far away. I'm going to be coming back. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, whenever it is uh, next year, I'm going to be there again. So if you can. Yeah, well, but you're in uh, what Chattanooga? Yeah, just outside of Chattanooga. Yeah, uh, Strawberry Festival. I don't know where it is in Dayton, but Dayton's not too far away from me at all. I mean, it's probably like 30, 45 minutes, something like that. If I so. can, if I can, now, I'm not going to be presenting, but if I can, I might actually be rolling into Chattanooga uh, in January for yeah. their version of Comic Con. Okay. Um, to also meet up with the same guy that I was hanging out with at the uh, Strawberry Festival, my brother in Christ, uh, Matt. Um, so I told him, oh, maybe I'll come for that because when I was at the Strawberry Festival, one of the women who runs the Comic-Con came by my booth and she gave me her card and she goes, oh, you have to come down. She wanted me to show. I don't know if I can, if I could set all that up in time, but if I can, I'll show. If I can, I'm at least going to be there. So if I'm in Chattanooga, then you definitely have to come say what's up and come Ooh. to Comic Con with your family. Come on. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to make is it is that a Christian based thing or do they just see your stuff and, and say you need to bring it on? She she's Christian. Okay. I don't know if the Comic Con is a Christian one. I don't I don't think it is. I think it's a regular Comic Con. Uh, yeah, I love that. Like, your stuff is awesome and most of the people I met in Tennessee were Christian. I don't think <laughs> I me um I, there might have been, there might have been some, yeah. atheists, but that was probably, you know, I, I'm not sure, but I had, well, I definitely had a lot of people come to my booth that were Christian. You yeah. posted, you posted um, something the other day about uh, like an old book from when you were like a kid. It was like a Bible book oh, or something. It's my, old, it's my old Bible. The first Bible I read. Yeah. Uh, started reading it when I was seven years old. So I grew up in the Catholic church. Yeah. Uh, now I go to Calvary Chapel in St. Louis County, but I did grow up in the Catholic Church, which takes it a little bit differently. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know where you are with the Catholic Church, but born and raised Catholic. But even since the time I was young, I knew who Jesus Christ was. I knew he was my savior. I knew he died for me on that cross. Yeah. Uh, I was blessed to have a lot of friends that weren't Catholic that talked to me about being born again and, and discussed other things that they were doing at their Protestant church. And I, I knew I had that relationship with him, but one of the coolest things was since I was young, I had this just desire for God's word. Yeah. And that Bible was the Bible I started reading. Um, when I was seven, it's old English, it's Catholic. So it has a few extra books in it. You yeah. know, uh, the, the Bible, we all, you know, has uh, 66 books. It has a yeah. few extra, but the Catholics do call them um, apocryphal, which mm -hmm. means they're not 100% scriptural as the other 66, 
but a lot of them are historical, like Maccabees, which talks about the story of Hanukkah and stuff like that. So, um, you know, pr- nothing heretical, but definitely extra books that aren't part of scripture. Yeah. That are, you know, spirit led. Yeah. As we believe the actual uh, Holy Bible is. Yeah, so. for sure. For sure. Yeah, no, I, I was looking, I looked at some of the photos that you, that you posted with the artwork and stuff in there yeah. and, and just kind of connecting that with how you were talking about how whenever you presented your stuff at the festival, how people were like excited about it. Yeah. There's not a lot of Christian like art like there used to be, you know, there's, there's, you know, so when people see the kind of stuff that you're putting out, um, yeah. it's exciting because there's not a lot of it. Why is that? You know, like why, like we serve like literally the creator of the universe that created heaven and earth. We see our all around us. Why? Like, I don't understand that. Why are, why are we as Christians like so afraid to, to create stuff? Why is there not as much? Honestly, <laughs> that's who started all the artwork, like all the Renaissance. Right. Artwork. Yeah. 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 At the time, technically they were all Catholic, but yeah, they were Christian, you know, during that time. And yeah. they, all the famous painters, all the famous artists, that's, that's what, and most of them were painting pictures of Jesus Christ. They were painting mm-hmm. biblical scenes and things like that. And then, you know, we went through that whole period, I guess, during that time period where, uh, you know, people felt like they wanted to walk away from the church and there's a lot of perverted things. And, and, you know, that's, that's something that, that I'm trying to do with these books is, Give give people something fun that's actually cool, that's yeah. woke, that's not perverted, that's not, you know, filled with, you know, the villains are, are the bad people. The people committing the bad stuff in the books, they're the villains. And the the people that are good, yes, they're not perfect. And, that, and that's the other thing, too, I try to touch on is that we're not perfect. All of us make mistakes. And so I paint pictures of heroes that are broken. That mm. through stuff, but then they find Jesus, and when they find Jesus and they get empowered by the Holy Spirit, it transforms them. We're all broken, we're all rough around the edges, but yes. God can take us. Jesus Christ could take us wherever we are, and He refines us in the fire like silver, like gold. You know, yeah. He removes the dross they say in the Bible, and He just, you know, He purifies us with His blood. We can't do it on our own. We cannot, you, you're not enough. I hate to tell that to people. You don't have the power inside of you unless you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And that is the power, the power yeah. of God. And only yeah. God can do that. And only Jesus can save you. Sorry, I went on a little. <laughs> oh man, no, that was good. That was good. And, and, and then that's why I'm writing these stories. And, and honestly, I, I am thanking the Lord that there are other Christians doing the same thing. I've actually, thanks to um, Instagram, I've met some amazing um, Christian comic book artists that yeah. are doing the same thing with their comics and some other Christian novelists um, that are that are doing the same thing. And I'm just, you know, and, and look at what he's doing through film and stuff like that now. God is, uh, you know, moving and we need to, we need to take the entertainment industry. And I think it's... Um, it's critical that, and I, I know you wanted to touch on why we need to be, you know, have Christian creators and creative people. It's because that's how our children, that's how our, 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 our whole, how everybody's being attacked. It's through the media, it's through music, it's through movies, it's through animation, it's through comics. The devil's just getting his foothold in and he's, he's trying to indoctrinate our children and, and teach them things. And, and necessarily my stuff might not be for young children, but, but I, you know, it's still something like that gives them that thing that they like, that, that action, that adventure, that hard hitting action that they're looking for, but it gives them a good value. It gives them, teaches them about Jesus, teaches them about um, God and the Holy Spirit and, and how we have to repent. And we need to change our ways and we need to turn to him and we need to believe in him. This is why I say it's not for young children, because I have some actual hard hitting stuff in there about homelessness, about teen runaways, Mm -hmm. um, about, um, you know, other topics of, you know, violence towards women and things like that and, and, and unpack it and, and show, you know, sin for what it is and also show how 
we need to break away from these habits. We need to break away from drug abuse. We need to break away from, you know, alcoholism and all these other things that can affect us and lead us down a dark path and get into the light of Jesus Christ and how God saves people from that, you know, in, in these stories. Yeah. And um, I think we need to create stories like this. We need to uh, take back entertainment. We need to take back the media and, and give people hope, give people something good to watch, something good to read. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll put, we'll put a pin in it right there. We'll jump back into that. I don't think I've went this long without doing the big three in, in, into the episode. So we'll, we'll uh, let's, 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 let's we'll do no, 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 you're good. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. No, I love it. Um, all right. So let's knock these out. Cause I, I'm, I love everything that you're saying. I have complete agreement with it. So we're going to jump right back into that, but, um, we'll do the big three real quick. You know, anything about the big three you, this is the first time you, you don't know anything about the podcast, do you? Yeah, I do. I'll listen to your podcast. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> I knew you did. <laughs> I was listening to it. Uh, no, actually, Chris, shout out to you for real, because, um, I just started doing, um, for my listeners out there who, um, tuned in for um, what is this music? The live where I review the music uh, just started that last month. Chris listened to all of it. Um, it was actually last night. Um, listened to the whole thing and it was like over two hours long. So I appreciate you. I appreciate your support, man. It was awesome. I, I love what you're doing with it. Thank I'm you, man. It. So yeah, thank go you. Three, I'm ready. All right, here we go. All right, uh, question number one: Your uh, go-to theater candy. Ah, so my go-to theater candy, I, let me say, I like Skittles. There you go. Yeah, that's a classic. Like Skittles, and, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something controversial uh -uh. because it, it doesn't just go for Skittles. It goes for Starburst too. Guess what my favorite one is? So is it the same flavor for both? Yeah. Orange? No, it's, it's yellow. I love oh, get out of here. You can I'm have those. I, oh, I love them. I, I love the <laughs> lemon Skittles and I love the lemon Starburst. So when people are throwing out their lemon Starburst, I'm like, give them to me, give them to me. You can have them. But yeah, it seems like anytime you get a pack of either of those, it's covered with like my least favorite flavor in Skittles is the lemon and the green, whatever the green is. Lime. Toss those. The green one is you can have both of those was originally then they changed it to apple and if you watch the packaging now it all points to the green one and say it's lime because people are like we don't like the apple we want lime and so yeah no you can have you can have both of them i stick i just stick to the uh the purple whatever the purple pack of the skittles are that's my oh, yeah. go-to yeah, 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 like those are good flavors which is good for me because then they yeah. can eat berries and i can eat all the <laughs> yeah all right so uh question number two take you back to your childhood a little bit your favorite Saturday morning cartoon as a kid. So I'm trying to remember if this was on in Saturday mornings. I think this was more an after school thing, but He-Man was my favorite. Yeah. I loved He-Man. And there's just something about this, like just super powered guy who grabbed that sword. You know, it was a regular dude. He grabs that sword. He turns into He-Man and he could solve any problem and the power of gray skull. And I was, I had every action figure. I had all the castles. Oh, yeah. I was a huge, huge He-Man guy. I mean, I like I liked a lot of cartoons growing up, but He-Man yeah. was absolute, absolute, hands down favorite. Is that kind of the inspiration behind the shirt? <laughs> what the a story told shirt with yeah. the giant sword? Uh, actually, that probably is. You know, I didn't even think about that, but <laughs> the sword, this sword, actually is uh, the word of God. Gotcha. Ephesians. Yeah, Ephesians yeah. six. Uh, I don't want to say much more about it because you really don't see this sword until book number two. Mm. So I haven't read book number one. I'm not telling you about this sword yet, but it is actually the word of God. I love uh former God that we say that passage with our kids every night before they go to bed. And um, that was, that was one thing that my mom always did with us growing up. We always said Ephesians 6, 10 through 17 before we went to sleep. And um, so I almost, whenever I started the, the podcast, I was going to call this the Ephesians 6 podcast. Yeah. And I went to go try to make an Instagram page and it like wouldn't go through at all. Like, and I, so I didn't know what the deal was. And I was like praying about it. And I'm like, what is going on? And I was reading, I was in the book of Acts and the very first uh, verse in the book of Acts, Luke says, I'm writing to you on behalf of the work that Jesus began to do. 
And that word began like really stuck with me because like Jesus did everything he was supposed to do. He said, it is finished on the cross, but there's like something for us to do. Like we're called to do something. And so like, as I was reading through Acts, I got to Acts chapter four, verse 13, which is, I say that this verse on, on here a lot, where it's just Peter and John in the, in the synagogue uh, preaching and the people could tell that they were common and educated men, but spoke with boldness because they had been with Jesus. And so like, like, I'm like, we're all called. And I was like reading acts. I was like called to act, you know? So that's kind of how that, that came about, but it was almost Ephesians six podcast there for a minute. I, I think actually God led you this way because I feel like Ephesians six is amazing, but I feel like names of podcasts called to act. It yeah. just, it, it, it reaches so many more people. And when you hear it, it's like, oh, what is this? I want to I want to learn more about this. Why, why are we called to act? I just think it, it, it's awesome. So I appreciate it. Yeah. And, and Ephesians 6, too, that honestly, that'd be kind of cheesy for a podcast name. I feel like, yeah. well, but, it is I, amazing. It is one of my favorite chapters in the yeah. Bible. But I mean, for you know, we're trying to, like you said a second ago, and I still got one more question, but this this is this is um uh, like we're trying to reach, like we, we are trying to encourage fellow Christians and we're trying to um, disciple those around us, but we're, we're, we're trying to reach the lost as well. You know, so like if a, if a non-believer sees just the word called to act and they see, you know, like the lion and stuff, they might be kind of, you know, interested, you know, to check it out more. So if they're like, oh, wait, that's just a book of the Bible. I don't know if I want to check that out. That might be lame, you know. Um, and so, you know, not to say that the Bible's lame, but you know how we have that reputation as Christians as kind of the cheesy, corny, yeah. um, you know, not creative. And um, so, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I think the Lord kind of um, redirected the the name of the show. But all right. So uh, question number three, if you could uh, take the place of one artist or musician for one of their songs, what would the song be? So you're the lead singer of whatever that that one specific song. Oh, um, you know what? It's not necessarily probably my favorite song, but it's one of my it's one of my um, newer favorite songs. Um, Fear is not my guide by Demon Hunter. Yeah, I think I would do that. Or or if if I had a second choice, it would be Cold Winter Sun, also by Demon Hunter. But Fear is <laughs> not my guide has a slightly better theme to it. But Cold Winter Sun is awesome. It hits hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't. You've been talking them up. I'm gonna have to check them out. I don't know. You know, you know me. I'm more of a, a rap fan myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I do also like hip hop, but um, I'm a I'm a huge metalhead. Hence the long hair. Um, <laughs> but so, so yeah, that's the big three. So let, let's get big, get back into this. I'm I'm really enjoying this conversation because um, this this topic has been coming up a lot in terms of like creativity. Somebody, um, my man Justin over at Be a Man Podcast, he had me on his podcast the other day. And he asked that question to me. It's like, why do Christians need to be creative? You know? Yeah. And um, so like, I know we kind of touched on a little bit there, but like if somebody just presented you with that question, why do you think it is that Christians need to be creative? We need to be created because creative because of this and this alone, right? We're not of the world, but we're in the world. Mm -hmm. You know what? Like you said, we need to save the lost. Well, you know what they're doing? They're watching TV. They're doing mm -hmm. stuff reading comics they're 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 into music they're into this stuff and we need to attack the enemy on his own battleground we need to take it out from underneath him and get these people stuff that's in that entertainment segment that is glorifying god you know uh speaking of jesus christ and who he is the other reason is God himself, and I've said this before on one of my posts, God himself is the ultimate creator. He is the creator of everything. And he created us in his image and likeness. So like him, we're many creators. And we have that in our spirit because God loves to create. He loves to, you know, he created everything that we have. And look how amazing this universe is that he created, how vast it is, how infinite it is, how everything works so perfectly, which is funny that people don't believe there's a God doing it. But how could things work so perfectly if it wasn't orchestrated, if it wasn't designed? We're, we're like him. We're like our father. And we have that creative energy inside of us. We have the desire to create. And he wants us to. David himself sung Psalms. I mean, the creativity, the arts has been, you know, just ingrained with people of faith from the beginning of time. 
God is the one who instituted all of this. And so we're, we need to uh, use, and he gives us these talents. He gives us these talents. We don't, we're not creative because we're just creative. We're creative because God gives us creative talents. So I know it's like a long winded kind of wrapped around answer, but it's because he's a creator because he gave us these gifts and we need to glorify him. And also we need to attack the enemy on the stage that actually he didn't set that he stole from us to begin with. And That's we need it. to get back. We need to yeah. storm it and take it back. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, just look at Jesus, the, 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 like the creativity and the way he healed people, like spitting in the ground and then wiping up mud. Wiping, like, I, I mean, who, who thinks to do something like that? You know what I'm saying? So it's just like the, the way that the Lord, um, not only did the miracles and the way that he was doing different things and the way that he told stories, yes. you know, parables was a big part of what he did. And then the disciples come to him and he's like, why are you speaking to the people in parables? And he's like, because the people can't see like you can see. The people don't hear like you're able to hear. They can only understand what I'm telling them through these parables because they, they still have those those blinders on on their eyes. And so like the things that you're describing and the way that you're coming forth with these novels and stuff, that, that can kind of be a catalyst in a way to help the scales be removed from somebody's eyes. You yes. know what I'm saying? And so like, yeah, I just think that's so powerful. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do through not only the podcast, but through the music, the lives and stuff, because somebody could just come across it and they can hear music. And then they're like, Oh, this is, I kind of like this music. And then either me or the person that's hosting with me could say something about God or something in that moment, something that me or that person might've been struggling with or whatever. And you never know in that moment, the way that you're saying something or the way you are writing something can touch somebody in a way that can affect them deeper than yeah. anything else that they've been able to, you know, come across. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I you know, it's like I said before, I mean, I've got people around the world that when they, you know, they wouldn't take a Bible at first. Then mm. they would take a book. They would take my book. Well, yeah, I'll read your book. And then they're like, you know, I'm really curious about this Jesus. Wow. And then, you know, how can I learn more about him? Can I ask you questions? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And um, it's just amazing. And, and even people in the States too. I mean, I've plenty of people that read my books and then wanted to know more about Jesus um, because they, they, they just, you know, they, they were really standoffish about it. They didn't understand who he was. They, they, they probably thought Christians, like you said, like you were saying before, like we're all just a bunch of dorky, you know, <laughs> all yeah, no, yeah. perfect. We're living our perfect lives and we're not, we never make a mistake. And then they see these heroes in my books that are broken. And then they come to Jesus and Jesus just fixes them and makes them strong and gives them power to face any adversity. And, and, they see hope in that. And then they're like, but I, I need some of that. I need some of that. Mm -hmm. So I need that Holy spirit inside. Yeah. Of me. And then yeah. they read the Bible. And that's the first thing I do. I don't say, Oh, read more of my books. The first thing I say is get you a Bible. And I, I walk them through John. The first thing I always do is walk everybody through John. Yeah. I think, I think the best place for anybody to start reading the Bible is not Genesis. I feel like if you start at the beginning and work your way up to the Gospels, you're going to get lost. If you're a new believer, I think you start in John. And the, yeah. best part, the reason why I say John is a few reasons. One, um, as it says in John you know, 20, this was written so that you might believe in his name and, and have life in his name. And as the first reason, it has power in it, right? But also, I feel like it shows the deity of Christ. It shows who he is and it makes it very easy to understand and get to know him. Absolutely. And love John one. I love John one, one, which says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And what I do is I go through John one and then I flip to Genesis one and I yeah. read the account of creation. And, Cause it says in John one that everything was created through him for him by him. And yeah. then look, this is how he actually created it. But look, it talks about it here. And it's Jesus. Jesus is that word, that creative word. And you were talking about creative. He's the creative expression of God. He is, mm -hmm. he is the creative expression of God. He is the word of God, which the word actually, our English is so bad. Yeah. Our English is so bad because the word word does not really translate logos properly. Logos is like thought made, you know, like thought personified, thought turned into something tangible. And it's like, it, Logos is such a powerful word. And the funny thing is when I started um, um, 
doing the Bible studies with the Chinese. I use a Chinese Bible that's got English on one side and Chinese on the other side. And they read through and the word that they have for logos is the word Tao, which we all know Taoism and stuff like that. And the funny thing about the word Tao is it actually is a very accurate translation of the word logos and better than the English word, the word. When they read the word in English, they're like, but it's, it's not really powerful enough. This other word is a lot more powerful. And I said, yeah, because it's translated from the Greek word logos. And I, I kind of go through that with them. And they're like, yeah, exactly what this means. And, and, you know, Jesus is that. He's that creative expression. He's that personification of God's very power and his word, I guess, because that's our English, best English translation. Yeah. Made flesh made into, you know, you know, I did a whole thing on the Trinity on Instagram. Yeah, I love that. And just, you know, we, you know, we, we've, you know, don't not, it's really hard to understand the Trinity. It, it's a very tough doctrine, but we know um, that there's three persons, three distinct personas that are one essence of God. And it is one God, not three gods. And they are not the same person. They're all three distinct persons, but they are one God. And, um, it's just such an amazing revelation and, and it's just, it's just so powerful. Yeah. 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 I love John too, because if, if somebody thinks that Jesus was just a pushover, if you read John, you see automatically just how direct Jesus was, you know, oh. he wasn't messing around with people. He was just right to the point. And so if somebody could be like, if they've never read the Bible before and they're like, Jesus was just like this hippie tree hugger. And then if you read John, the way he was direct with people in the way he spoke to people. You're like, this isn't what I expected Jesus to be. You know what I'm saying? And another thing too, what you said is, is how you were talking about how we need to create um, for like younger kids and stuff for them to see who, who maybe not have been taught or um, yeah. I, there was, there was something, it blows my mind really to kind of going back to what you mentioned a minute ago about how Christians used to create these things, these, these cathedrals and this art and stuff like that. But oh, yeah. we kind of got away from it. Well, I, like I think Satan, he's he's kind of taken it away from us long enough to where he's infiltrated the school system, infiltrated all of entertainment and media to where it blows my mind how many kids actually don't know who Jesus is at all. And it's it's crazy for me to think about just because it was something that I always grew up around and everybody around me knew it. But um, last year we went on vacation and um, to um, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, to Dollywood. We went to Dollywood. Oh, nice. And, um, we, they have a little chapel there. Have you ever been at Hollywood? No, I haven't. Well, they, they got a little chapel and we were walking through it, uh, me and my friend, and um, they had a, uh, you know, a cross up there behind the pulpit. And they actually do services there on Sundays. Oh, and wow. uh, so they had, the, they had the cross up there and they had Jesus on the cross, right? Mm -hmm. And so there was these two young kids standing there. And me and him were kind of looking at all the artwork and stuff. And I'm like, man, this is beautiful in here, you know? Yeah. And um, these two kids are sitting there looking at Jesus. And the one guy, the one kid says the other one, these kids were probably like 11 or 12 years old. He was like, who is that guy? Didn't even know who he was wow. at all. And the other kid said, that's the one that, I don't remember his name, but that's the one that died on the cross. And it just broke my heart because I'm like, and I, and I was kind of looked at my friend and it really opened my eyes to see like how important it is that we are trying to reach that next generation because they legitimately don't even know his name. They're, they've, he's been taken completely out of schools. He's yeah. been, been completely taken out of all forms of media. And, and, you know, if you run the culture, you're running everything. So that's why it's important that we as Christians are not just staying inside the church, inside the four walls of safety. Yeah. And like branching out there and truly spreading the word, like Jesus said, and it, at the end of Matthew 28, like go into all the world and, and preach the gospel. My pastor, my pastor talked about this the other day, that if you look there too in Matthew 28, how, um, I don't remember what it, specifically what it says, so I'm paraphrasing, but it says something to the effect of Jesus says, uh, go into Jerusalem and all the corners of the, the world um, and make disciples. Well, it's like we oftentimes as here in America, like we say we're Jerusalem, but we're not, we're the, we're part of that four, four corners go into all the corners. Yeah. And so it's like, we, we sometimes can, um, I don't know, in our Western mind, put ourselves more so in that story than we actually are. You know what I'm saying? 
And like, so we shouldn't just stop where we're at and act like, okay, we're Jerusalem, but it's like, we're part of that four corners. So we have to keep spreading because we've been given the word. So we have that responsibility to push forth with the word, trying to reach as many people as we can. Now more than ever. And mm -hmm. especially like what you were saying, people don't even know who Jesus is anymore. At least when I was a kid growing up, people, anybody with a beard and, a, and, and long hair, everybody was like, oh, it's Jesus, right? They, <laughs> they knew it was like Jesus. Now, now maybe it wasn't the right looking. I don't know what Jesus yeah. Like we don't know, <laughs> maybe he didn't have quite such long hair, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Who Jesus was, but I feel like they've done more than just like, okay, so yes, a lot of kids might not know who he is, but they also made a joke of him too. Mm. Like, I mean, with like shows like South Park or whatever. Yeah. So many, so many times um, media just like makes him into a joke or makes him into a, oh, you know, and it's, it's, it's sad because he's, he's God. He's God almighty. And uh, it's just, it, it just makes me sad because think about, I just think about his sacrifice, think about what he's done for me. Think about that. I have life because of him. Mm -hmm. And when, when, you know, we make a mockery of it, Satan just made it so easy to make a mockery of Jesus that it's so commonplace these days. I, I see, you know, if you look throughout time, the church becomes stronger through tribulation. The, the church becomes stronger through, um, negativity and through pain and suffering and those type of things. So I think like now is the time when the church is being, you know, attacked and made fun of and, and pushed aside and made to look like we're just a joke. Um, I think now is the time. And I think 2020 did a lot of that because it showed who was like really down with like going to church, who was really down with, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. who was trying to do things the right way and not just going to church because, Oh, I've just went to church my whole life. So I have to go to church on Sundays. Um, and so now I think is, I, th I think is the time where a lot of Christians are waking up and I meet people. I feel like it's almost like every day now where I'm meeting a new person and they're like, they have that same fire. And, and that's just something that I don't, I don't feel like was a, maybe it was. And I just didn't know because I, I rededicated my life in 2020, but I know before 2020, I never was meeting people who, were like on fire for Christ. I never met somebody or, you know, I never ran into a lot of people who were like, yeah, we got to, we got to use everything at our disposal for Christ, you know, but, um, now I don't know if it's just because, you know, you put your yes on the table for Christ. He starts surrounding you with people. I don't know if that has something to do with that. Could, that could be, you know, a part of it, but, um, yeah, I just think now, now is that time because it, it's just, there, there comes that time when enough is enough. And so, um, I just say, and I know that was kind of long winded, but I just say all that to say oh. like the, the stuff that you're doing is important. Um, anybody out there that's trying to do something for the kingdom, like it's important and it's needed in this day and age, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for a reason. Yeah. And, and I, I'm totally a believer in that. I believe every, everything that happens is for a reason. God, God just puts us in places where he, where he wants us to, uh, just be obedient and do the work that he calls us to do. And it, and it doesn't matter how big or small that work is. And I want everybody to know that you might not be writing books. You might not be, you know, famous, or you might not think you're important. You are important. Every single person is important to God. He created you for a purpose. He created you for exactly who you are and who he has called you to be according to his will. Um, and I want everybody to know that I want everybody to know that, God loves you. Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you. He died for every single person. When you become a true Christian, when you repent, when you come to the Lord, when you believe in him and put your faith in him, he gives you the Holy Spirit. And no matter how small it is, even if you're driving somebody to church or or you're there's you're an usher, it doesn't matter what you do, even if you just tell people God bless you and you give them a little bit of word from the Lord, that one person you touched, that one person you told about Jesus Christ is, could, you know, now come into the kingdom because you, you shared the gospel with them. And, uh, so there's nothing too small. You know, right. what we do, God, God has a purpose for each and every one of us and you're, yeah. and you're loved. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I shared this last week, but I think it's so fitting right here. And my, my friend, uh, Antoine McGee, like he's, he's a big part of, um, like the encouragement stuff that the Lord has put around me. There's been several guys, but he's been, I'd say he's probably been since we met probably my, like my closest, one of my closest friends. And, um, he sent me a video the other day about 
how um, until recently um, scientists thought that it was just the fastest sperm that got to the egg, but I heard it. Yeah, this was just crazy to me. And, and, and I should have said it last week with this verse, but I was just thinking about it afterward, how crazy it is that it's the sperm that sends out a signal to the, uh, or I'm sorry, the egg that sends out a signal to th that one specific sperm. And that causes that specific sperm to speed up and the other ones to slow down. So mm -hmm. like literally think about you were chosen out of a crowd, like out of a specific number of people, lit literally to be born into this time. And if you look in John 15, 16, going back to John, it says, you, uh, you did not choose me, but I chose you. So right. you look at that and then Jesus says, not only did I choose you, but I chose you to bear fruit. So like there, ha there has to be fruit in what you're doing. If you are like a true believer of Christ and you are trying to um, um, live for him, there's going to be some kind of fruit there. Like you're saying, even if it is just taking somebody to church with you or uh, giving, giving the pastor a bottle of water, you know what I'm saying? Before he goes up to, to do his sermon, whatever it is, if you're helping out parking in the, you know, in the church parking lot, whatever it is, like you were chosen to bear fruit. And so like, whatever you can do, just make it happen because there's a reason why you are here. And Satan doesn't want you to figure that out. Yeah, no, those little things are so important. That I, when you said that about giving the bottle of water, the first thing that came to my mind was when Jesus separates the sheep and the goats. And he's like, you know, you gave me something to drink when I was thirsty. Mm. When I was hungry, you clothed me when I was naked. You gave me shelter, you know? And they're like, when, when, when did I do that, Jesus? And he was like, whatever you did for the least, mm. rather than for the least of my children, you did for me. And then he goes to the other guys and he goes, you didn't, you didn't do these things. And they're like, oh, but if we had known it was you, Lord, and he goes, whatever you didn't do for them, you didn't do for me. And yeah. that's so important. What he talks about, he's like talking about just giving somebody something to drink, giving somebody food, giving somebody a place to stay, visiting somebody when they're sick. To Jesus, those are kingdom things. Those are things that 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 he's calling you to do. He says it right there. This is these are the kingdom things I I you know that I wanted you to do. Give yeah. somebody a drink. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've been reading James a lot too and how James talks about um, basically, you know, don't, don't, if somebody comes into a party just because he's dressed nicer than somebody else, you don't put yeah. that person in the front of everybody else and then tell the person that's not dressed as nice to, to go away. Um, so it just goes back to that aspect of like Jesus is, is not a respect. Uh, he doesn't show respect of, of position. He doesn't show you more respect if you're in more of a position of authority or uh, you have more money than somebody else or whatever it is. It's just like, like you said, what have you done to the least of these or what have you done to those around you that are in need? The son of man did not come to be served, but to serve. And he led by example. Remember, he washed his disciples feet at the Last Supper and he, he showed us what it really means to be a leader. And it's that you serve others. And so, I, yeah. Well, I mean, think about that too. Wa washing somebody's feet. I mean, first of all, it's just straight up nasty as it is. But, <laughs> back, you know, and back up, back in those days, these dudes are walking around with sandals on, with dirt. Probably, you know, one of them might have stepped in, you know, horse crap or, you know what I'm saying? Going through these fields. Like we do every day and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why they all wore a lot of perfume <laughs> to hide the smell and they had the scented oils and all that stuff. Yeah, no, yeah. it's true. He, uh, he led by example. And, and that's our God that did that. That's our God. I, that's how I challenge people all the time when they talk about, you know, Jesus, this, Jesus, that. And I'm like, give me one other false God, obviously, but give me one other God that would do what Jesus did, that would serve, that would that would take your punishment for you and die for you. Every other God I, I've read about in Greek mythology or whatever, they're, they're not that kind of God. They're all about their own pleasure and they're, oh, throw you away. They don't care about you. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's how we know we have the real God. Because how awesome is that? That our God would be willing to come off his throne, come down to earth, become what we are, become a man, and take on this flesh, live a perfect life, and then pay the worst penalty for our sins. 
you know, but he rose and he rose up. He, he took back his life. He rose up and we have victory through him. So praise God for that. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. This was, um, I needed this. This was, uh, you know, I'm doing a, I've talked about it on the podcast before how, and I think I've actually spoken to you about it. Um, how I've asked, I've asked a couple guys for prayer just because I'm doing, I'm planning on doing a series on like, who, who is Jesus. And so this, this, I feel like this is perfect. Cause I'm starting that next week. And, um, so this was kind of a perfect segue into it. And this is not something we didn't plan. We didn't talk about this beforehand that we were going to get into this topic, but, um, but yeah, it's, 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 so I want to save some of that back, but just the price that Jesus paid, um, I'll, I'll get into it in a couple of weeks because just because I got some stuff that I'm I'm excited oh, about. But I'm glad you're doing that. And, and you said you plan it, but you know what the problem is when you got two people who love the Lord as much as we do. That's what you want to talk about. Like, yeah. I, I find it. People ask me all the time, you know, oh, you don't post enough about your books and stuff like that. I'm like, I try to post as much because I want people to know. Mm. Right? You know, I do. I do want to sell books. Obviously, I'm not going to lie. It'd be yeah. great, but I can't stop talking about Jesus. I mm. can't. I just like, that's my, that's my passion because he's my passion because he, what he did for me, what he did for you, what he did for all of us. I mean, I, I could never thank him enough. There's no, there's nothing we could ever do. Yeah. And, and he just gives it to us freely and of his own will and with so much more love than we could ever know from anyone. You know, I mean, it's just amazing. So I can't, I can't stop talking about him. I love him. Out, out of the uh what is it out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks um there's there's nothing else once you have tasted and seen that the lord is good and, and seen the things that he can do um in and around your life why would you even try to pursue anything else amen i've, I've started doing this thing uh, this just flew by uh i started doing this thing a couple of weeks ago where i kind of give my guests um the last word and if you don't have um something i could just edit this out but like, is there something specifically maybe going on, like in your spiritual walk or something that you've read in scripture that's been really sticking out to you or something that you're going through? Because I know we're all on different um, walks and different stages of life and different stages in our spiritual life. So is there something that you would be willing to share that kind of stands out to you that you've been experiencing lately? Well, I, I think something really important that I do want to talk about, and um, it, it's why I did that um, series on the Trinity um, last week, yeah. I think it's important that more people really understand God and understand the doctrine of what we believe and why we believe it and the truth of it. Um, not just, not, not, not just, I mean, a few things, one, the validity of how important it is that we know that the scriptures are accurate and errant, that they're historical, Yes, but that we understand God and that we understand the totality of God and not just you know, one part of God, but that we understand truly the Trinity, God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy spirit, what that means. And, and it's important because we need all of God. We need all of God in our lives. You know, he is our father up in heaven. He gives us so much. And Jesus Christ, the son of God is what, you know, is one, the, the creator, he's the, you know, the expression of God's creation. He's the word of God. He made everything through him and, and his sacrifice is what saves us. And the Holy Spirit's the part of God that dwells inside of us. And when we, we, we forget sometimes that we have God in us, that once we're Christians and we truly believe in Jesus Christ and we give our life to Jesus Christ, that we actually have God inside of us. We have him in us and we can draw on that power. And so I, I just, I really want people to understand, you know, who God is and to, to read their Bibles, to get to know him, have a real relationship with him. God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy spirit, the totality of God, all of God. And I think that to me is really important that people understand that. And I emphasize that in my writing. I emphasize that in my life. I emphasize that in my prayers every morning when I wake up. I get down on my hands and knees. The first thing I do is I pray to God and, and I pour out my soul to him and I worship him and I glorify him. And then I open up the Bible and I ask him to bless the reading of his word. And I read the Bible because the only way you're going to get to know God is to read the word and to pray to him. That's how you know somebody. You talk to them and you get to know them. 
So I encourage people to read their Bibles and get to know the true God, the true God of the Bible. Yeah, man, that's awesome. That's awesome. I, I you know, the the thing that you said there that I love too is how um, how important and distinct each Godhead is. You know, the um, especially like the, the churches that I grew up in, there was such a downplaying of the Holy Spirit um, that I honestly, growing up as um, as a kid, and actually up until I'll be honest, probably the last four or five years. Um, I always, there was always such a downplaying of the Holy Spirit that when I thought about God, I thought of this huge being, this light, you know, that was kind of always kind of like my picture of God, the father, you know, Jesus is, is you kind of look at him and he's like, that's my, you know, he's a, he's a friend. That's how, how he describes himself in the word. Like he says, you know, um, uh, I call you friends. I, uh, I, I no longer call you servants yeah. uh, because a, a master doesn't tell the servant what he's planning to doing, but I call you friends because I've told you what I'm doing. And so like, you know, you kind of have a picture of Jesus in your head, but the Holy Spirit was downplayed so much so to me and my upbringing that I almost kind of pictured him as like this kind of poindexter, you know, got four, uh, four eyes glasses, just kind of like a nerdy side character that wasn't even no really power behind him. You know what I'm saying? And I, you know, it frustrates me because I know that was Satan using, you know, not to say that the, the church that I wasn't that I was brought up in, not to say that they weren't believers, but they weren't um, preaching the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit actually was and the power that we have through the Holy Spirit. And so for so long, I just kind of delegated it to kind of like this dorky, you know what I'm saying? Like side character that didn't have any kind of power. That was just, he's just kind of hanging along with Jesus and and God the Father, you know? And and so, but the, the more you get into words and then you see, like I said earlier about Acts chapter four, verse 13, just the boldness that that Peter and, and John spoke with, because you look a little bit earlier in John, it's either in Matthew or John, where um, J- Peter denies Jesus three times, you oh, know, and, yeah. and so like you go from that to now I'm speaking in the synagogue. I know what you guys have done to Jesus. You you killed him. So I know that by me standing here preaching of his risen and, and ascension and that, you know, we're we're speaking boldly right now. I know what the consequences might be. But because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that I now have, I can go boldly forth with the command that he's given me to preach the gospel, yeah. you know. And so, yeah, I just, I, you know, I, I wanted to give you the last word, but it was just like I, I had to, to touch on it, too, because I'm, I'm sure that sto- that is not unique to me because there are churches that that kind of downplay the Holy Spirit and, and downplay the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and I want to say this the right way. I don't want to say this the wrong way. It's because I understand that we have to recognize Jesus Christ is our Savior. Mm-hmm. Jesus is the part of God that came down, died for us, gives us our salvation. But because of that, a lot of churches, what they do is they only talk about Jesus. Yeah, yeah. They don't talk as much about the Father and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now, this is going to sound really weird because one thing I do appreciate about my Catholic upbringing is that I learned from a young age the holiness of God mm. and the Trinity. Yeah. And they, they, they indoctrinate you from a young age about how important it is to understand that God is holy and that you have to have reverence for him. You have to have full respect and about the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is talked about a lot in the power of the Holy Spirit and you know how the Holy Spirit went into the apostles and that's how we do things. And they actually talk about that a lot. And so I did grow up with a lot of reverence and just um, awe for God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And and I grew up that way and loving the totality of God, God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, knowing fullheartedly what Jesus did for me on the cross, but knowing that the complete God. And so that's why I, I... use that as my last word, because I feel a lot of times as Christians, we downplay the father and the Holy spirit. Yeah. And I do think we need to remember the, the complete power of God, absolutely, the son and the Holy spirit working together, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That, yeah, that's so important. That's so important. We can't forget about any of them. It has, you know, you have to have that that, and I think that's that's kind of to tie all this in a bow. Like I think we, I think that's how we 
take back that position of um, we're the head and not the tail as we get back to that uh, holiness of God, that reverence of God and all three, God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. We bring back that holiness because like you said, for too long, it's just been like we're making a, almost a joke out of just what the world's doing, making a joke out of Christianity and out of Jesus. We yeah. have to get back to that holiness of God is holy. He's almighty. Yes. Yeah, and it's, yeah, we got to get back to that. So, yeah. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So, man, tell people where to find you at. Where do they find your book? Where do they find you on social media? So, really easy. If you go to a storytoldbook.com, if you just go to that website, a storytoldbook.com, there's links to everything to my Instagram, LinkedIn, gotcha. Facebook, you name it. There's links to Amazon where you can buy the books. And there's also a series on there called Manor Machine that is absolutely free to read. Um, it is 550 pages, so enjoy it. But it's, it's broken up into <laughs> six chapters. And uh, it takes place between the second and third book. So I would love it if you read the books. But if you want to have a taste of my writing, uh, definitely read Manor Machine. And uh, yeah, and so yeah, astorytoldbook.com. Oh, I love it. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. I'll put all the, the links. I'll put the links to your website and everything like that in the description. So it'll be super easy for the people to find. But man, this has been this has been a blast. This has been an encouragement to me. Thank you for, for taking the time to come spend some time with me today. No, thank you for having me. And it's been an encouragement. You've been such a huge encouragement to me since we first met on Instagram. And we just, uh, I'm so blessed to be here. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah. Likewise. Likewise. I love the stuff that you post about the Trinity. You know, the stuff that you, the, whenever you post your videos and stuff like that, it's always, it's always something that as soon as I uh, see you post something, I'm like, okay, I got to check this out. You know, and there's not, a, there's not a lot of people that I say that about. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I, appreciate, I, I appreciate what you're doing and I'm um, just, um, yeah, don't stop what you're doing. Just keep going. And uh, you know, you're in my prayers and, um, yeah, I just appreciate and appreciate everything you're doing. I'm thankful that the Lord's allowed us to uh, cross paths and, uh, yeah, next time you're in Chattanooga, we're gonna have to meet up. I'm holding you to that, so I hope you for know sure. It. Yeah, we got it on tape. We got it recorded now, so it's uh, yeah. it's official. But <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, Lord willing, same time next week. God bless you guys. <laughs>